Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ryan Benecki, so let's talk PlayStation. So currently, my lapel mic is actually broken, so right now I'm using my uh, desk mic for all the audio. So I've kind of switched to the uh, right side of the screen, or left side in your case. I don't think you guys really have a preference for that. So, tough luck. Anyway, starting out the news week pretty strong, a Plants vs. Zombies sequel was finally announced by EA, but it was kind of a really slow, vague, very formal announcement. It was just like, hey, Plants vs. Zombies 2 is coming, and that's it. Like, no screenshots, no nothing, just a press release of EA just saying, hey, it's coming. But who cares? It's cool nonetheless. I mean, Plants vs. Zombies is such an addicting game, so I can't wait for the sequel, and you can expect it spring 2013. But while we're on the topic of PopCap, the developer of Plants vs. Zombies, it was also announced this week that uh, the company had a couple of layoffs. As much as 50 uh, people are now out of jobs at PopCap. So, as always, good luck to those people. Our hearts are out to you. Hopefully you get a new job soon. And while on the topic of people losing their jobs, Sony Liverpool has been uh, officially shut down. If you didn't already know, Sony Liverpool is responsible for the most popular uh, Wipeout series on the PlayStation 3. Their recently released title was Wipeout 2048 on the PlayStation Vita. They've also been credited with developing Lemmings and Shadow of the Beasts. My guess with this one, guys, is that Sony's just trying to cut their cut their, their losses. You know, a couple weeks ago on Let's Talk PlayStation, we were talking about how Sony lost a good amount of money, like billions and billions of dollars, and the, the gaming division specifically lost $45 million. So if anything, this is probably them trying to cut costs, you know? I mean... That's just how the business works when you're trying to make money. But as with the PopCap employees, we also want to send our condolences to all the guys over at Liverpool. Uh, hope you get a new job soon, guys. Also, thanks for making great video games. This new story I found extremely interesting, and it's actually not that far-fetched. There's a rumor going around that the PlayStation 4 is going to support 4K resolution. 4K, of course, meaning the horizontal pixel count of 4096, as opposed to the normal resolution of 1080p, which most TVs support nowadays. 4K is uh, actually, it definitely is a real resolution. Sony has a line of XBR TVs that get like 80 inches big, and uh, they showcased this at CC, uh, CES a couple of years ago, I think, or just last year. They had 80-inch TVs, specifically 4096 resolution. And the rumor is that if you have a PlayStation 4 and one of those godforsaken 80-inch huge-ass 4K TVs, you can play some high, high, high-definition gaming. You're probably thinking, holy crap, this, ma this, this sounds really expensive. Maybe the PlayStation 4 is going to be expensive. Maybe Sony didn't learn their lesson. Cool it, guys. Calm down a bit. If you didn't know, most Blu-ray players on the market today that are around 200 bucks actually already support 4K resolution. So this idea isn't too far-fetched. If anything, it makes sense that the PlayStation uh, 4 would support such a feature. However, I will say it probably will be expensive to buy an 80-inch TV. And my favorite thing in this news week, new Grand Theft Auto 5 screenshots. Bam, bam, bam. Check those bad boys out. They released three screenshots earlier this week, and then they released another three later this week, which we're going to look at now. Bam, bam, bam. And uh, they look awesome. Why do they look awesome? Because they're demonstrating all the extra things that a Grand Theft Auto game is usually known for. Uh, a lot of people were upset about GTA 4 because it took out a lot of the, the free roam aspects of like San Andreas, which was the last uh, Grand Theft Auto game before then on a console. And people didn't like GTA 4 that much. Primarily one of those reasons was they couldn't do all those extra things like ride bicycles and fly jet planes and do extra activities like play tennis and shit like that. But... Grand Theft Auto 5 is clearly displaying some of these things right here. The thing about Grand Theft Auto 4 was it was the first Grand Theft Auto on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. All that new horsepower was showcasing uh, uh, New York City, for example. But, you know, New York City is just buildings. You, we didn't really see a whole lot of, like, plant life and green and mountains and stuff like that. But that's what GTA 5 is within, you know, the Los Angeles area. You see a lot of green, a lot of bright, vivid colors, and the game is just popping with color. But at the same time, it still looks like a realistic Grand Theft Auto. The game's shaping up to be really awesome, and I can't wait to see more. I want another trailer. Hopefully, they'll release one soon. Thank you for talking with me on this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Bonecki, and see you next Friday.